Hey, good afternoon, YouTube. It is Ricochet with Thunderstruck Transport. Welcome back to my channel, Nothing But Trucking. We are stuck here in New Jersey, Bordentown. I'm at the Petro over here in Bordentown, New Jersey, unfortunately. Got uh, a load delivered yesterday up in Newark and was supposed to pick up a load of juice that was going down home to Florida. Unfortunately, the load canceled, and because it's a Saturday, I ain't going to get anything else out. So, we kind of lost out on our second load for the week, putting me at a short week, but, you know, next week will probably be better. Next week was going to be my short week anyway, because I was going to be home. Ah. So, we'll just switch out next week. I'm, I'm not going to go home now. I'm going to take another run to Denver, and then from Denver, I'll go home, and then I'll take my short week so you know we'll still make the same amount of money we're just going to switch the weeks so today uh it's kind of like a down day and uh gonna get some stuff done on the truck we just had that in this truck uh, uh in the shop in, in cheyenne wyoming and uh, i was down there for about a day and a half and uh they did a, an overhead run a bunch of injectors put new injectors in the truck put a fuel pump or a water pump and i had a def sending unit for the diesel exhaust fluid uh for the regen process and uh, had had a lot of different things done that was all under warranty and now i don't have a check engine light that's kind of weird i didn't have a check engine light last time i went in but we didn't have the things fixed that was causing the check engine light to come on not that it was something that had to be done right then anyway. I mean, we could have waited, so it was not a big issue even while I was running with the check engine light. Um, so I kind of got used to running with that check engine light for the longest time because we just, I mean, it wasn't a big thing to get it fixed. So they did clear the codes when I got some work done the last time, and I ran for about a day with no check engine light. I felt really weird. I was like, ah, oh, there's this something wrong, man. I don't have a check engine light on. And then it came on the next day, and I'm like, whew, oh, thank God, there's the check engine line. I feel so much better, uh, <laughs> which is not the way it's supposed to be. But now that we've had all that stuff fixed, uh, now I don't have a check engine light, and it's kind of weird, actually, but, you know, it's uh, nice. So today, um, I had a uh, issue on the side fairing here. Uh, one of the hooks broke that kind of hold the fairing up, and that's the steps, too, so kind of important to have that that fixed properly and uh i've been kind of uh, didn't have it fixed because you know it's a couple hundred dollars for the part and uh things were you know didn't want to spend it right away so i was just kind of babying it for the last uh you know few weeks but we got the part we got it put back on unfortunately part of the wires that run down all my marker lights that go down the side of the fairing which are not required by DOT, but to make the truck look nice at night when they're all lit up. Yeah, you know, I can go faster. We call those chicken lights. Back in the 80s and the 90s, you know, and I, you know, it was usually the, the Montford trucks, which used to haul, you know, Montford's probably one of the biggest meat companies. Uh, they used to haul swinging meat at the time, swinging, swinging cows, swinging beef, and uh, all the Tyson chicken trucks. And uh, you know, they, they always had all the lights all down the sides of the trucks, trailers all lit up. Uh, so we used to just call them chicken trucks and, uh, you know, so when you got all the lights, you're, you're a big, big rigger, Billy, big rigger with the chicken lights. So you can go faster with the chicken lights. And I have my chicken lights on the side of the truck. Ain't been working. I only been able to run 68 mile an hour. Now that the lights are on, I can run 80. So the lights make you run fast and, uh, not really, <laughs> but, if you got the lights, you got to run fast because now you got an image to uphold. You know, you got your truck all lit up. Anyway, all those lights haven't been working because when the fairing thing went, it didn't, uh, you know, it, it was pinching the wires that uh, the crossover wires and all that. And I blew a fuse in here because the wires, you know, shorted out. So today we're going to fix that. So let's take a look at that. Let's see if we can get these chicken lights going. Got some other things I'm going to do, uh, just kind of putting around and a lot of cleaning and whatnot that I want to get done that I haven't in the last few days. So it's going to kind of be a get her done day. So let's check out with the uh, the side stuff here and get that done first. So this here's the battery compartment. I got the side fairing taken off. That's the one right behind the steps. And this is the one right under my door. 
And as you can see, I have all these lights that go all the way down the side fairing. And these are the plugs that powers this power station. And then I have a plug that powers these lights. And then we have this. So that is broke. So we need to splice those wires. And then all of those actually plug in to this wire, which is the crossover that goes to the other side and uh, powers the other side. So I had to replace this bracket right here. This is what was missing was that bushing. And there's a hook on this truck. As you can see right there, it's a little hook. And that's what it fits into that bushing. This one here is missing, been broke for a long time, and it pinches that wire if it's not put in properly. And uh, that's just a stabilizing cable. So I may have to replace this whole bracket right here, just a one piece bracket. But for now, we're doing pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and just splice these wires and get that working properly. All right, so you can see we got these wires all done. This is where it was broken, right through here. So we got it all taped up. Got that one plugged in. It goes back to all of these lights. And got this one. This is where it gets pitched. So when I get this up, I want to try and find a good place to wire, you know, get a wire loom or a uh, cable tie in there. So... Let's go ahead and get this on and uh, see how it works. All right, so this is the switch that controls my side lights. And there should be a light. See how there's a light there? And a green light here. Now it's off. That light should be lit up. So evidently we got a blown fuse, which is right under there. So we're going to take this apart see what fuse we got. I'm not sure which fuse is F8. So, we're going to get out. Trust the owner's manual. See what it has to say. Or fuse F8 is. Here we go. Look at that. Tells you right where all the fuses are. We need F8, which, looking at it this way, showing these two circuits as these two circuits right here. So F8 is straight down this line. One, two, F, F1, F2, F3, F4, F5, 6, 7, 8. 15 amp fuse. So this little blue one here, we're going to see if we got any power to it. Wonder if this light bulb is not working. Because it ain't coming on. So we're just going to go ahead and take this 15 out. And visually take a look at it. I need a fuse puller. Ah. Get your handy dandy little fuse puller here. Grab on to it. Yep, it is burnt. I don't know if y'all can see. No, y'all can't see that. But it is gone. So we're going to toss that one. <laughs> Put in a new 15 amp fuse. Got one right there. That one's better. 
And there goes my light. And we do. We got lights going back down the side again. Looks like I have one bulb out there. Go check the other side. Yeah, we're good. We got lights there. There, there. Yeah, they're all on over here. So I got one bulb out. But that's all right. We'll get that replaced. That should be pretty simple. Right behind here. Yeah, we'll figure that one out. Well, oh well, man, we've had a busy day today. Uh, got those lights fixed, finally, thank God. And uh, got my, I don't know if you've seen it in the very first part, got my uh, two-way flat, well, let me turn on the light here. Uh, there we go. Got the two-way flag up there going. And uh, got all my lights on for, for night. Yeah, it's my nighttime running here. Let's see. We need to get the candle. There we go. Got the candle going in the back now. <laughs> uh, at night we don the blue and pink and turn on the orange and red, kind of like the submarine hunt for Red October. Uh, but yeah, anyway, we got all that done. What else did we do? Got the Got the flag, got the lights, uh, got everything. Oh, took out all my carpets and my floor mats and armor all the floors and armor all the side door panels and dash and uh, just a lot of cleaning, a lot of, you know, polishing and and uh, chatting with some of the drivers around here and uh, kind of just had a great day. So, like I said, uh, we are going to be heading home. Well, we're going to be heading to Denver tomorrow sometime. And then we'll head home. So we should be back in Florida this time next week. And that'll be just over four weeks on the road. I don't normally run four. Usually I'm out about two weeks. But this uh, past six months, especially because freight rates have just been so bad. And uh, running this stuff between, you know, Denver and uh, Pennsylvania. You know, I've kind of been doing two runs back to back and then and then getting a load back for a third delivery in Pennsylvania but then going to Florida and that's been putting me at one, two, three, a little over three weeks. So um, come on Trump man. We need him back in office so we can get all this all this BS fixed and our rates back up where it's supposed to be and uh, get back to trucking like it used to be. So making some better money and being able to spend time with the family a lot more. I do miss them, miss the heck out of them, so I think my son's going to be coming with me on my next trip, or maybe my wife, uh, unfortunately one of our dogs is a diabetic dog, but he's also now 11 years old, and uh, I don't know, he's not doing very well, so she may be staying home, just in case something happens, she would really feel bad if she was out on the road, if something drastic happened, and we had to leave it to the kids to handle, so probably just let her stay home and hopefully he'll, he'll hang on for a while and be fine, you know, so he's got good days and bad days, just like anybody, I guess, sometimes I feel the same way, uh, but anyway, guys, uh, appreciate you all joining the channel and hope it was a little enjoyable today, I haven't put much out uh, in, a, in a while, the holidays and it's just been kind of crazy with a lot of weather and things like that. Looks like we're slowly getting into the springtime again. I know we probably got another one or two good storms to hit. Uh, hopefully I'll miss them and won't be able to, you know, won't have to drive in them, but then we'll get back into the good weather and we can get the drone back up a lot and do, do some more videoing that way too. So anyway, guys, appreciate y'all watching. Y'all have a great time, uh, great day and uh, thanks for joining and we'll see you again on the next one.